Have you ever thought about how many times we repeat what other people have said in our own conversations? Let me tell you, so many. Maybe we heard someone say something interesting on TV. Or maybe we want to tell our partner what our boss said at work. Or maybe we just feel like gossiping with some friends about what another friend has said. Well, in any of these situations, we need to report or say again what someone else has already said. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do that so that it sounds really natural and engaging. Nobody likes telling boring and confusing stories, right? Okay, so the most important thing to understand about retelling other people's speech is that so many little things change from the original because we need to retell the story from our own perspective, not theirs. Let me give you an example to explain what I mean. So let's imagine that you have invited a few friends over for dinner, but that day one of your friends, Maria, calls you. She says, I can't come for dinner tonight because it's my son's birthday. Now, imagine that you were at work the day after and one of your colleagues asks you if Maria came to your dinner party. See, if you just repeated, I can't come for dinner tonight because it's my son's birthday, I bet your colleague will think you're a little crazy. Or at least I would, because it just doesn't make any sense. So, if we want to be clear about what happened, we will say something like, Maria said she couldn't come for dinner last night because it was her son's birthday. Ah, now that's much better. But how have I done it? What have I changed? Let's look at this last sentence bit by bit and try to answer these questions. So when retelling a story, we should start by saying who said it, like Maria in our example, and then using a reporting verb, like say. So my story will start with Maria said. Now it's up to you whether you want to add that after said or not. Both options work. You could say, Maria said she couldn't come for dinner or Maria said that she couldn't come for dinner. Same, same. All right, now we get to the juicy part where we actually retell Maria's idea. We will break this one down into two parts, verbs and other words. Let's start with the verbs. Okay, so it's important that we change the verbs to make it clear that the situation happened in the past, not in the present. You see, when Maria said, I can't come for dinner tonight, or it is my son's birthday, she was speaking in the present. So if we repeat what she said the day after, we can't say it is her son's birthday because it was yesterday. So because yesterday is in the past, we need past verbs. She couldn't come for dinner. It was her son's birthday. See how the verbs have changed? Cool. Now, before I tell you about the other little tricky words I've changed and why, let me tell you about why you should study at English Unlimited. Come and study English in Australia at English Unlimited. We have English schools in the best cities in Australia and some of the best English teachers in the world. You'll have the best time of your life and improve your English. Just click the link in the description below to find out more. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. We said earlier that it's important that we retell stories from our own perspective, thinking about what has changed from the original situation to our situation now. So let's look at all the words I need to change to make sure my sentence retells what Maria said properly. I changed I to Maria. I changed can't to couldn't. I changed tonight to last night. I changed it is to it was. And I changed my sons to her sons. Wow, lots of changes. All right, I know this was a lot to process, so how about you just give it a go with another example? I'm gonna give you a sentence, similar to the one about Maria. You just think about how you would change it if you wanted to retell it to somebody else later that day. 
Ready? Let's do it. Imagine that one morning, your colleague Jack says to you, I have to leave work early today because I have an appointment with my lawyer at 2 p.m. It is now 3 p.m. and your boss is asking you where Jack is. What could you say to him? Pause the video and think about the answer. I'll show you mine in a bit. All right, how did you go? Did you remember to change all your little words? Let's have a look together. So my answer is, Jack said or said that he had to leave work early today because he had an appointment with his lawyer at 2 p.m. See, I have replaced I with he, my with his, because Jack is a guy, and then changed the verbs from the present have to the past had. Very similar to our Maria example. This time though, as I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, I haven't changed today. Because in this example, the two situations happen on the same day. Jack told us in the morning, and now we have to tell our boss in the afternoon of that same day. So, well, it's still today. Well done. This was a tough little lesson. I know this can seem a bit tricky, but trust me, if you just think about changing perspective, everything will get easier. Well, we're done for today. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos every single week. My name is Nikki and I'll see you soon.